Uh, somebody tell me if we're not, but I think we are actually live. Um, I'm just going to uh, check out the stream. Twitch.com. Twitch.tv, I guess. That's not a .com. Um, it says we're offline, according to me, so that's not good. Yeah, okay, so now it says we're live. Um, and I have notifications on Twitch. Good good times. Oh, hello! You, people can see me! Oh, and I can hear myself now because I'm watching my own stream. Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> okay. Alright, uh, guess what I didn't do today? I did not edit the slides. Terrible, terrible person I am. Um, <laughs> which also means... I didn't check to see whether uh, anyone signed up for a plug. Let's do that right now. Um, I mean, we're not really getting started for like 20 minutes, so you get to watch me. Actually, you can't even watch me because it's a different window, so I'm just going to self-narrate, I guess. I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> um, in the past, I have uh, had music playing. I failed to do that. Um, actually, my plan for this this time was actually that we would meet in alt space. Um, so if anyone wants to do that, we should totally do that. And I see Scott in the <laughs> nice. Um, I see Scott in chat. I know Scott knows how to do this. Um, if you wanted to join us, you have a plug. Yeah more plugs ever people okay you guys are both here for plugs what's what's sad about the way that twitch works is that people who show up after you um will not see those links in the chat which is very sad um so you'll have to you'll have to plug them again you post them in the, again like basically spam the, the feed as much as you want um yeah cool i'm i'm glad that you send it to me because I'm going to check that right now. <laughs> oh man, I'm really not on the ball today. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I meant to write that up, but I don't know where we should go in alt space. I think we should meet in there's like an IGDA room I think um right I think um <laughs> Zach told me nice job in alt space I'm not really sure what he was referring to maybe just that I'm live I'm not even sure um so I I have a home space or or like yeah maybe maybe that's how we sh I'm trying to figure out like where we should have people go in alt space to hang out. Um, so if you have any ideas, Scott, let me know. Um, there's like I I don't know if is it easy to find other people's home spaces? I don't know. No one that I know um, with this account is online right now. So it's my living tech account in alt space. Um, and I will, um, I'm going to put up a page for this. It was my plan. <laughs> Am I going to really do it? Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. Uh, The question is, does it allow you to search for someone and then no users were found with the name ASDF? I need to find a user that's... You know what? I should just show you what I'm doing because I'm in alt space right now. 
So I'm going to like go find a user named Bob. Try it for Bob. Yeah, there's a Bob. And I cannot go to them without sending them a friend request. That was my question. So, like, I can, like, search for, here's all my friends on Altspace. Okay, you know what, we don't need to do that. Um, nope, that wasn't it. This one is it. Okay. boringest stream ever. <laughs> but we have like twice the number of viewers that we had five minutes ago. So yay for that. Um, I should put up the screen that means that one. Yeah, do that. Talk amongst you. Talk amongst yourselves! Oh boy, I messed it up. Okay, here we go. I'm back. <laughs> what is <laughs> though if I should go to like a place that's not just like my home in all space and then um, that might be more exciting <laughs> Zach's online he's in Lakeshore Cabin I'm gonna go to there yeah let's show it Ooh, alt, that's the alt space loading 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 loading
Here I'm at the cabin. <laughs> Hey, nice job. <laughs> all right, now I can now I'm like visible in alt space. So like there's alt space. Oh, chat pause due to scroll. I scrolled. Okay, now we're back. Uh Yeah, Altspace logged me out today, too. I'm not really sure what the deal was there. Okay, there's Zach. I don't know if... Can everybody hear the crickets on the stream? I'll bet they can. Yes, crickets are audible. So Zach should be audible as well if he speaks up. You gonna speak up, Zach? Hey, we've been friends for seven months. I wonder if Zach can hear me, because I'm muted. Let's try to unmute. Oh, grant alt space microphone access. That's some BS right there. Let's try that. And the all, the microphone access is behind Zach. <laughs> Hi, Zach. Hi, Marty. Hey, we can hear someone. Uh, you. It's Jeff. I don't. You probably can't hear me. <laughs> Scott can't. Hear oh, hey, me. I was muted. Marty, you muted? <laughs> yes. I mean, I think the new thing is you're muted when you get in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and the uh, and the. Let's try that. And the um, and Marty is three seconds behind us. I mean, the uh, in the Twitch. How about yeah, now? You that's can just you, the outgoing. Can you hear me now? Yeah. That's so I'm going to go better. mute. But yeah. That's a lot better. A lot yeah. better. Um, so that's yeah. fun. So you guys are on the stream right now, just so you know. So what shouldn't we say? Well, you know what I can't do is I can't click in Twitch and change and move around in alt space. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a problem. <laughs> well, so, um, so what we want to do is put a what about put, what about put the Twitch feed controls. up on a screen somewhere. Uh, yeah, you, you, you go ahead and do that. Say, say yeah, that again? I was going to say, which is the thing we can't do, right? Yep. Keyboard controls. You won't be able to adjust your head, but you can slide around the ground. Man, you sound just like a keyboard when you move your mouth like that. <laughs> <laughs> got to get out of this stupid costume. Let's see here. Oh, you've got your costume on. My Halloween costume. Uh, clothing. Yeah, so Marty, I was like you. I guess I was I was logged out. I had to go figure out what my password was. <laughs> well, I have two accounts, so it was like even more confusing. I logged into the wrong one, and then was like, "Oh yeah, okay, now I have to go to the other one." What happened to my face? That's not good. So I asked you this two weeks ago. You you've got a mustache now. That's um, <laughs> in real me? life. Yeah, I got a beard. Beards look terrible in here, though. I so, mean, not yours, of course. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't say what I'm thinking because it's a, because I'm on I'm on Twitch. Um, that was a close one. So Marty, I I uh I went and I. Click the button in the Eventbrite thing to bring up the, the Twitch URL. And what came up was a recording of two weeks ago, the VRHCI thing of, of Zach getting ready to sort of start the presentation, which was kind of cool. <laughs> was it cool? But again, it, well, it turned out <laughs> I wasn't logged in. 
it wasn't logged into Twitch either, and so I logged into. <laughs> That's even better, Zach. Take a selfie of yourself. Yeah. I gotta fix my hair. What happened to me? Need my Mongol hat. Which account am I? Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, it must be the right account. You got a uh, some handlebar anyway, was, going on there. It was there. pretty funny looking to find out what I looked like. We got someone else running around out there. Is that for us or no? So this is a public space, right, Zach? Right. Yeah. So can we invite people into the uh, the VR room, the VR HCI room? That's got a, a white list, so only if they've been to a meeting or gotcha. pretended that they're going to nope. show up for a meeting. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in the when when we start actually talking about that. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about it now, obviously, but we're good. that's going to be a thing we're going to touch on. So, so the what other, do you think, um, Zach? Oh, wait, what? I got a go ahead. In front of my face. The other space I was thinking about was the Brooklyn rooftop. Should we try that? Certainly could. Or do you want to not go through spaces very much? Um, I the instructions that I wrote up uh, tell people to friend me, and then I will uh, invite them to where I am. Okay. So sure doesn't matter how do they friend you how do you friend somebody so you have to go to the so if you go into the all space menu which i'm going to illustrate right now i'm going to click on it then i got my all space menu up which and zach gonna, and i can't see. you can't see it right so i'm going <laughs> to click people yeah. and then i search for people and i can search for and interestingly it only says two of my friends or one of my friends is online it doesn't say you're a friend scott well <laughs> but, i mean yeah, <laughs> um, that's because I don't think I'm a friend of uh, yeah of, of the guy you are now. Right, this is my like Pretty blue Marty. This, yeah, this is my like VR, uh, VR HCI camera guy basically. So now you've friended me, I just, and I will accept it. I just it. friended you. Anyway, so if you go to people but, and then you search, but how do you for get people, a civilian? Somebody who's just joined in. Right. So <laughs> you go to people. And then you search for their name. That's the key. And it's the username only, right? Uh, yep, the username. Yep. So I put that in living my tech. little document. Yep, it's living tech in this case, which yeah. is kind of backwards or whatever. We do have that IGDA account, right? But it, that's, um, I mean, Patrick's the one who's been kind of managing that. So I don't even yep. know what the password is. I thought about trying to log in as that. Because that would make more sense. It's just like our popular password, but there's a space at the end. But oh. uh, don't change it now. It's 6.30. Right. Too late. Um, well, here's an, an interesting thing. So I went to Twitch slash IGDATC just now just to, like, let's check it out or whatever. And it says it's live, but it doesn't show the chat. Why not? The chat was showing up on mine. Oh, they're okay. I clicked I clicked into it, and now I have the chat. Yeah. I had to, like, click the header or click the video itself. Right. I they don't understand the ouch, ouch reference. Like, who's ouching? I've been muted. Why have I been muted? That was weird. So the problem with, with Altspace VR is anybody who's going to want to join us here is going to have to kind of go through the login process, right? Yeah. Hi there. Sorry, just thought it was popular. <laughs> Say that again, Scott. Um, anybody who's uh that you're going to invite on Twitch to come here is going to have to go through the whole login registration process. Yes, right? they will have to create an account. That is a true fact. Um, I wound up. I'm trying to figure out how we might, you know, use VR somehow or this kind of thing for the Met. And uh, Jim Russell and I wound up playing in Hub the other day in that it's really kind of neat and that there is no sort of registration process. You pretty much just show up. Yep, you go you go to the URL and then you're, then you're there or whatever. Yeah. And you can, you can restrict people coming in with some sort of code or something, right? But it's just not as nice as this. 
I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think one of the thing uh, the another like uh, possible um, you know social spaces is uh, what's it called VR chat. And I so I like played around <laughs> with it just a tiny bit, and yeah, it was similar. <laughs> like just felt not who'd, as who'd you meet? Or the <laughs> I didn't meet anybody. I just kind of played around with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that say, probably would have been I, a better test to like go in with someone. But I, Rec Room's got um, direct URLs, but I think you still need a uh, an account created. But that that's a pretty good choice. It's on PlayStation and stuff too. Yep. Um, wait. So you can play? It's on PlayStation. I didn't know that. I think so. Yeah, and they promised Xbox they haven't delivered yet. But how does I mean do so all the that, what? games translate into two D? Oh, it's been two D for a long time, like a year. Oh wow, I did. I had and, no idea. And uh, all the two D people ban VR people for teleporting. Okay. Especially in paintball. Yeah. I suppose that makes it, yeah, like un uneven. It's like when you played. I I think. Was it Halo? Like the very one of the first, like first-person shooters that I played on a console. You know, like you could still hook up your keyboard and mouse to the to the console, <laughs> and then you were immediately fifty times better than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 thing I I have against this place where we are right now is I'm shy. I don't like meeting strangers. It is a little bit awkward when, like, especially if we're in, you know, like, we're trying to be a group or whatever, and then there are strangers that come in, and you're like, oh, hi. What are you guys doing? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is... Remember that... Which is why we have our own space for the VR meeting, right? Like... Yeah. Yeah. Because it could be a yeah. lot worse than that. Oh. <laughs> sorry. No, no worries. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting something. Sorry, I don't know why. No, you're... <laughs> It, it's a public space. We were just talking about that. <laughs> oh, awesome! Oh, is it your world? May I ask? Or no? May I... no? Nope, you just came just, here. Uh, yeah, this is just a public. Just looks... a place to chat. It looks amazing. Love it. The one I the one oh. thing I really like about this one is the, you know, uh, you can walk out into the lake. And there's a boat yeah, out there somewhere. Have you found the sailboat yet? You'll find the sailboat. Uh, no, but I was in the lake. Like I was, I was walking on the lake somehow. Or yeah. in the lake. Yeah, I'll try to. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's amazing. There's more and more people in all space. It's amazing. I love it. I guess it's the Quest Two now. It really does look so good in the Quest Two. Yeah, I'm. I'm happy. Because I came here for Burning Man, there was a virtual Burning Man here, so I came here yep. on, um, I came here just on a computer, and now I also then I really loved it, because there was also a Burning Man event in um, Second Life, but yeah, I mean Second Life, it, it's good, but it's different. But this I prefer VR to be honest. So yeah, so and then so I what, bought the uh, Quest Two. What gear are you using, Zach? Uh, Quest Two. Uh, I haven't gotten mine yet. I guess I better get one. No rush. Everybody but will you... be owned by Zuckerberg now. That's right. Well, I'm on a Quest One, but I'm just <laughs> an old guy behind the times. <laughs> <laughs> he own, owns me in lower resolution. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it does look like twice as good in the Quest Two, I think. Is it? I've never been on a Quest One in all space. I've used one with a friend. Is it better in the Quest 2? Is it like, I mean, it looks amazing to me, but I can't. Sharper. What is better on the Quest 2? The resolution or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No so the, sharper. The, yeah, the main difference to me is that text in the Quest 2 is like not a problem or not an issue. Whereas in the Quest 1, yeah. it's still pretty blurry. So anything that you want to be able to read, you have to have pretty big in front of you. Um, so on the Quest 2, for instance, oh, I, yeah, I can like pick up a book. Like a like a real life sized book, you know, in VR, and like read the back, but that that would never have been possible on the Quest One, I don't think. Would but I'm Swiss, but so what blew my mind is so I thought, oh well, during the presidential election, as I'm very interested in politics, I thought, oh well, maybe there's some president American presidential elections on in all space, 
and somebody actually did make a room and they were showing like I think uh, NBC or something and it blew my mind so it, it was showing basically the the election coverage in HD and we were in the room like so I was watching TV with some people and it, the resolution was amazing it was it really kind of blew my mind so it's and that was in all yeah, space. Yeah, it's amazing. Somebody, so somebody was showing... in all space watching the election with yeah. other people, and they were sort of commenting. And you know, it would be, it's like being with friends watching whatever. I mean, from yeah. a TV show to elections to a sports game, it really felt like this. And the, the resolution was amazing. I mean, it was really like HD, basically. Yeah. So and and it's very smooth. So it, because I also went to a Zoom election party, and it was nice too. But it was just, this is much nicer. The thing you were doing yeah. in all space for the election was it was it like a private space? Did you have to get invited into it, or was it a public? No, it was just some just some uh, some people. Uh, that the, there was also after election party, and uh, but yeah, it was just somebody said like we watched the election, and I thought it was on. Oh my I always God, go on a the chicken there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna step back out and uh I'll, I'll just be standing here probably um but I, what do you want us to do uh marty well i was just gonna say i'm gonna start the actual like you know the intro slide so if you want to you know watch those you could you probably want to leave alt space but i for our short talk today we're gonna talk in alt space um so you're welcome <laughs> to hang out here or not here or whatever you, you want to start do. doing that <laughs> all right Sounds good. It's nice meeting you guys. Have a great nice meeting Yeah, you. have a good one. Yep. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so what? What's Bubble do? Okay, I have to mute. It uh, makes people disappear when they get too close. Oh. <laughs> I have to figure out how to if it's possible to mute alt space. <laughs> you can do it in the Windows audio mix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly Fire. right. Let's do that. Okay, I'm starting the slides. Uh, I never did tell them that we're on a stream. I think it's you're in a public space, even though you're in VR. I think like it's actually like I, I think you have to click through some kind of. Um, uh, thing when you click into alt space that you say like you're joining a public space and you might be recorded and stuff like that um, when you sign up for it. So n I don't think anyone uh, signed up and made it in. Um, oh well, that's w maybe we'll maybe we'll get some of you doing it um, when uh, when we get started with that. As I mentioned, the short talk this evening will be um, about about alt space a little bit. So um, this is roughly what we're doing tonight. Enough about that. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are the um, IGDA Twin Cities chapter. Um, we aim to be in a safe environment, inclusive, so everyone is welcome. Um, we have a safe arcade policy up on the website. You're welcome to go read that and essentially adhere to it, even in the Twitch stream. Um, so far, that's not really been an issue, but um, it's it's there in case it is. Um, we used to meet physically in the time before time forgot. No, that's not the right. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, <laughs> we used to meet in person, and when we did, it was at the nerdery, and they bought us pizza. So imagine that you're eating free pizza right now. Although actually, yeah, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, these are roughly who we are, uh, or who runs this thing. Um, lots of we're all volunteers. Um, that's probably enough about us. But um, you you went out and stole some pizza. I don't I don't know like what from who like somebody on the street like you saw a pizza delivery person and you just grab grab their pizza. <laughs> the nerdery. Although it's not the nerdery anymore. It's just now a nerdery. For the record, they were very um, insistent about that. Uh, so I, I did mention that I forgot to update the slides tonight. 
Uh, it's just uh, fun times. But um, here's here's the the uh, last month's calendar slide. Um, we I, it's worth noting that I don't think we're gonna have a, a meeting in December. Um, at least not a normal meeting. Um, we almost never do, like we just haven't. And then I like had for like a brief two month period, I thought, ah, let's have a meeting in December. Like it's just like now every day is like the last. So we could do that. Um, and we probably still could, but uh, I think that we probably won't anyway. Um, if we do have a meeting, it will be some kind of social thing, possibly in alt space. So this is sort of a dry run for that. I mean, cause I think, um, what's missing from our meetings now that we used to have all the time was um, the social part. Like, so part of, you know, a huge part of our meetings was getting together. I'm just going into my, like, alt space talk, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that yet. Um, so anyway, these, all, all the parts here that say next meeting are totally wrong. Um, the next meetings will be in January, the next meetings with actual talks and stuff. Um, so ignore, this slide is pretty much useless. <laughs> um, the VR meeting is actually not happening this month. Um, I think that's true. I hope that's true. Zach can correct me if I'm wrong later, but I think that we decided not to have a VR meeting this month, so the next VR meeting will be in um, January. <clears throat> but we always have uh, three meetings a month. I think I'm, I, I, sh I was supposed to mention that on the slide. <laughs> we have the main meeting that you're at right now. We have uh, the Twin Cities playtest that'll be next week. And we have our VR meeting. Um, and yeah, and not this month. Uh, so the, a little bit about the Twin Cities playtest. We have it every third Wednesday. Um, there, uh, essentially, you can sign up if you have a game that you'd like to be tested. You can sign up if you'd like to play games. And um, in all cases, basically contact Peter or Mark. And um, these are mostly organized on Discord. And uh, yeah. This is, oh man, last month too, I said I was going to update this slide with a new screenshot of the actual website, and I totally didn't even do that. Um, so the website has has a new look to it. It doesn't look exactly like this anymore, but it still has a connect with us button. And um, there's lots of stuff on that page. Uh, it's not it's not organized great but it's it's or i mean it's all there uh so there's just a bunch of different ways to connect with us um obviously the social media twitter facebook etc but um, more importantly slack and discord so um especially now we're you know kind of chatting 24 7 um in slack and on discord discord less so i think although usually discord is a little bit more active during our meetings um and slack is active during the day when people are actually like doing stuff um i, w I wouldn't say every day but you know it's it's a fairly active slack there's a few hundred people in there so it's good um, we're always looking for presenters. I think right now we have January covered, but we're looking for February, if I remember right. Um, although often by February, we might have some Game Jam games to talk about. I can't remember what meeting it usually is that we talk about Game Jam games. Um, the Global Game Jam will be online this year. Uh, so we are planning to have a site for that. Um, we haven't talked too much about it we as the board, but we're definitely going to do it. Um, or anyway, I'm definitely going to do it. Uh, and I hope other people are going to do it because then it won't just be me. Um, it, but we'll all be meeting online. So that's an, a, a thing that's going to happen. Uh, and um, I mean, I think game jams are fine online. It's it, it was always odd to me, actually, that the Global Game Jam was so insistent on, you have to meet in person to do this jam. I remember one of the first years I wanted to do it like kind of remotely and, and it's, it was like against their policies, which doesn't make any sense to me. But so anyway, this year it will definitely be online, although they're still encouraging us all to meet, um, you know, to like be sort of in a region or in a regional sort of group. And we're supposed to explicitly have somewhere that we meet online. Um, which we already do, like we have our Slack and Discord. So both of those are um, viable options for that. Anyway, um, we'll probably create a new channel for the Global Game Jam, although I think there is already a Global Game Jam channel in, at least in Slack, 
and uh, it only gets talked in pretty much during the Global Game Jam. So um, the Global Game Jam is a great jam, and it's one of the larger ones in the world. It's really cool if you don't know about it. I don't know why I'm talking so much about the Global Game Jam. Because you could present about it, about your game that you make in the Global Game Jam uh, in, in February or something. Uh, we are a uh, a chapter of a truly international organization um, for game development, and uh, it's you know the the parent org is um, big and has lots of professionals in it and all kinds of um, benefits if you join. It's a it's a it's an actual like you know you have to become a a member, you have to pay them money. Um, we do not ever charge money for our events, at least so far and um, that's one thing that's different from us to them uh, but there are reasons to join and you're welcome to do so and if you do let them know that we're your chapter because um, in theory anyway there's some reason for that uh, it just it just tells them that there are people here that are actively making games which is cool um, we are on twitch uh, right now so that's this slide is about that I guess <laughs> kind of a pointless slide but um just the you know if we would like to hear feedback if anyone has any ideas about how we could be doing this better i'm not really watching the slide or the the, the chat so um <laughs> you know lane is the only one chatting in there anyway it doesn't doesn't matter <laughs> global game jam is awesome um so uh yeah just we'd love to hear if you think we're doing something dumb which i'm sure we are but no one's telling us. <laughs> so I, we, we are here. Um, I did not go and check for plugs, and the plugs that are in these slides are from last month. But I know that this one is the same every month. There is a Twin Cities community calendar at IceCold.Games. It's not updated very regularly, um, if at all, in these trying times um, but it used to be updated and you can add your events to it if you so choose um, our first plug of the evening is for the Minnesota Electronic Theater and you can go to minnesotaelectronictheater.org I believe it is in the uh, in in the stream chat there and um, this is gonna happen online this year um, it's kind of exciting um, I don't I don't know enough about it. And actually, ah, shoot, I should have had Scott like talk about it on Altspace. You know, it, we could we could just pop back into Altspace if you want, Scott, um, and you could talk about, all about it. Uh, or you can talk about it when we have our little Altspace thing in a few minutes, either one. Um, Scott said okay, but I don't know which one he means. <laughs> That's, um, he might be popping back into alt space let's 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 go check it out let's see if he's in there i mean i don't see anyone i see zach still in there but i don't see scott hmm. wah, wah. i mean if he pops up then i'll uh then oh you know what? i just realized i'm unmuted in alt space oh there's scott okay let's let's go back into alt space i'm gonna i gotta don't talk yet scott i gotta re i gotta unmute alt space <laughs> um, open the volume mixer all right i can hear alt space um scott tell us about the met <laughs> unmute yourself first. Yeah, unmute yourself and then tell us about the Met. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> yep. we, we can hear you. The, the Minnesota Electronic Theater has been going on for a million years, 25 or something maybe. Um, it's a annual gathering of people who make uh, computer graphics for a living or just plain old do animation since all animation is done with computers at some level, whether you draw it or not. Um, it's, uh, used, it's been in the past a fun party in a bar, and we'd have a guest speaker from usually out of state, and then uh, have a, a, a show a reel of uh, work that people have done in town. Um, it's, uh, we're not going to do that because of COVID. We're going to have an online meeting. It's going to be uh, the, the main, the, main uh, the showcase is going to be showing a re the reel of uh, people's submitted work. 
Uh, there's a jury going to meet to pick which work you get to see. There's 80 people who have uh, put stuff in uh, to see whether they get into the show or not. Uh, it's going to be December 3rd, uh, 6-ish. <laughs> but uh, the link that I put up in the comments is uh, go there and it'll have stuff. It'll have all the information you need to know. What I'm hoping to do, and the two people that are in alt space with me right now might be helping me try to do this, is we're going to try to have a VR, a VR uh, uh, <laughs> uh, component to it. Um, how, what do I look like when Marty's standing this close to me? Um, <laughs> we're we're going to try to have a, <laughs> a VR component to it. Perhaps in alt space, where we can, uh, and you'll be hearing in a little bit about what's cool about alt space, where some people can meet virtually in VR or 2D VR, 3D or 2D VR, and watch the show together to to uh, duplicate the uh, sort of experience that people have uh, at the bar, which is standing around uh, whispering in your friends, uh, whispering to your friends. One of the things that Marty's going to talk about alt space is. Uh, Usually only people who are close to you can hear what you're talking. So you can sort of, you know, break up into little pods and have conversations and have fun. Anyway, December 3rd, come and uh, uh, go to the, uh, the link that's in the, the Minnesota Electronic Theater .org, uh, all spelled out. We'll have all the info that you need to know about it. So that's there. Great. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> and I would, I would love to help set that up. I think that sounds super fun. Um, yep, and uh, Zach and uh, Matt have volunteered too, Aha, and excellent. we'll all come to tears. They'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give it the old college try. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I have been informed in chat that uh, also it is the um, Nice Games Club, Nice Games Club's two hundredth episode. Coming out tomorrow, so that's very exciting. Um, nice Games Club is a podcast about video game development um, by some local heroes. So uh, Mark Ellen, who is our main speaker tonight, and Stephen, and um, they are there's the channels for them in for the Nice Games Club in Slack and Discord, where you can talk all about every episode, and people do, and it's a it's a great podcast. Um, lots of lots of episodes. Obviously, 199 apparently have been released, so that's exciting. Um, I think I've listened to maybe one, no, no, more than one percent because I've definitely listened to more than two. Uh, <laughs> listened to like five percent or something. I don't really listen to podcasts, so sorry. Um, uh, website is acceptable in tablet layout. That's not really a tablet layout, actually. It's uh, this is my I'm on my PC desktop here. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that plug. And then there was a third plug, um, pin, pin combo, I think. Uh, I'm going to scroll up through my chats, my chats is, but do I see it? Do, 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 do. I don't see it anymore in my chat, so I have to, I have to... I don't know if I can go scroll back in. Yeah, no. Nope. It's, it's so weird. Oh, here it is. Yes. In combo. Um, let's see if I can pull that up. And I don't really know um, what I'm getting into, like what we're chatting about, or what this plug is about necessarily. Um, so Ryan is uh, pin combo and many other... Uh, Oh shoot! I'm trying. El, El, uh, El, uh, I'm so bad with remembering names of things. Um, lots of uh, okay. So there's c comics and plays for sale here. Elvira Canaveral. It's right here. Elvira Canaveral is uh, Ryan's nom de plume or one of them. And uh, these are all things that you can buy of his. Um, Ryan's been making. Um, pinball related things for quite a while and um, I remember these like this game of depth uh, and here's like pin combo book two I don't know if there's more this is this is a weird quirk so like 
this this page looks like it goes off to the right here, but I can't scroll that direction, which is good way to go, Amazon. I blame Amazon. Anyway, um, oh, there's there's we can read more. So anyway, this is this is stuff. Uh, Super Collider. Ryan's always doing weird stuff. I shouldn't say weird. Cool stuff. I, weird means cool to me, and sometimes I say that, and then I, I feel bad about it. Ooh, is is that Ryan in chat? I mean, I'm not, like, really in alt space right now, but somebody is, like, hanging out in front of my camera, and I do wonder if it's Ryan. I'm going to just I'm gonna turn the volume on just to see. Let's just find out if that's him. Hey, uh... Is is that is that you, Ryan, in all space? No. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Okay. That was uh, that was a fail. <laughs> Good odds. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. So enough about that. You can buy Ryan stuff. There's all kinds of stuff on there. Um. We are in a pu- we are in a public space. So it's just some random person walking in front of me. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's it for my plug or for plugs because I I did not log into Eventbrite. So if somebody else plugged something or wanted to plug something, uh, post it in chat and that would be great. But um, we uh, we won't know unless you post it. Uh, so this was last month. There's a couple of um, so this is kind of our last like plug my thing slide. Uh, did anyone release any games? I can't remember anyone posting any games. Oh, not true. Flailure came out. Um, this is a... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is going to be going to find it. Like, 15% off on Flailure on Steam. Yeah, look at that. This is... Uh, Flailure is... Um, a few local folks um, who have been showing this game at conventions for years now, and it is finally available on Steam. It's 15% off right now, so go grab it. Um, I wonder like, if I can play the audio. I don't know if this is, if this is audible over the stream or not. Like, I never know quite what's reaching the stream. But, uh... This is like a real, real local multiplayer game. It's, it's super fun. So, uh, a thing that you can get, you, you basically flail around with these like ball and chains, and you're trying to hit your opponents. Uh, it's good times, good times. I feel like there was another one, but I'm not, I'm not remembering it if there was. So, if you had a game come out and you didn't plug your thing, that's your fault. You're not plugging. I mean, they didn't plug this thing either. I should. No, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for our slides. So now I'm just going to roll into the next segment, which is our our uh, presentations. Um, and the short short talk this month is um, just me talking about alt space. So um, if you, I'm going to post that link in the chat again, um, just real quick. But uh, if you want to, this is meant to be kind of an interactive. Um, interactive show about uh, about alt space, and by by that I just mean that I would love for you to come join me and Zach and and uh, probably Scott in alt space, and we can just talk about what makes it great. Um, Scott's joining, excellent. So uh, let me just switch back over to alt space. Here we are, and. Um, I gotta pump up the volume. <laughs> pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. All right. Uh, nice crickets in this environment. So the the first thing I wanted to talk about was how we're using alt space. Or I, I didn't. I wouldn't say the first thing. First thing I wanted to talk about was just basics of getting into alt space. First of all, it's available for desktop. You can get it on Steam for free, um, both PC and Mac, um, and it's also available in all the VR headsets. So it was originally meant to be like a VR, um, you know, environment, like a social VR thing. Was it the first social VR, Zach? 
I'm just assuming yep. you're still listening. Yeah, okay. It, I, yeah, I think it was definitely, it, if it wasn't the first, it was early, early on. Um, and they just, uh, you know, it was it was great. Uh, it was a good it was a good one. I mean, there were only like, you know, in the very early days, there weren't that many. I think VR chat was around pretty early as well. But, um, it, you know, uh, one of the things that um, happened over the course of Alt Space's history is that they like were going to fold. They were going to go bankrupt. And then I think Microsoft like bailed them out or bought them or 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 maybe both. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's a Microsoft product now. And so um it, it's it's uh I feel it's the best one for <coughs> what we do. And I don't know if that's uh I shouldn't say that. I I it's one of the only ones I've used. So, but I think it's a good one. Anyway, um the way that we use it for the VR meeting is we have a private space that we can go to. And so it's kind of a pain to get into there, but that means there aren't just um, sort of anybody walking through. Like, we're right now in a public space, and I think, um, like, I, there's there's someone here with us even, and they're probably wondering, like, why I'm talking to these two guys just staring at me. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But so, you know, that's why you're being so rude. I am. I'm like, why am I just like or orating in front of this like cabin in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, now I've lost my train of thought. I don't remember what I was talking about. Just how. Um, but how we use it in uh, how we use it for the VRHCI meeting. Right. But more importantly, why it is um, awesome for the VR and HCI meeting. And, and it's because I, I feel like. What we're missing with our online only meetings, with our Twitch only meetings, is any sort of interaction. You know, you can't like raise your hand and say, ask a question. And you can post a question in chat, but it's not, uh, it's not the same, right? Like it's, it's not as immediate and it's definitely not like interactive. And I feel like, I mean, it is interactive. It, technically it's interactive. It's not the same. And um, also after the meetings, after the VR meetings, we have been essentially hanging out and um you know in we get places like this right right and we're just gathered in a space and talking to each other and it's it feels a lot more like when we had in-person meetings um and one of the great things about alt space is is uh, and this is true of most of the social vr platforms i think is that there is a audio drop off the farther away you are from someone so we cluster in in actual groups and have conversations and you might and you can actually get multiple conversations going um which is something that you take for granted in physical in the physical world um but in uh you know in the virtual world in 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 digital it's kind of a novelty like you know i i don't i can't think of any other time in the last two months or three months when i've been somewhere you know, been somewhere and had multiple conversations going on around me. Um, the only place that's happened for me, at least in in the you know the pandemic, has been in alt space. I that's totally why I've been shilling it to people just left and right. Is that is that there's this whole idea? I, I'll even zoom with old friends of mine, you know, the half a dozen people that, you know, we used to get together and have Zoom Zoom together on a Saturday morning. Well, you know, we're going to Zoom on Saturday and talk to each other. But at some point, I want to lean over to my friend Eric and tell him about, you know, the VR thing I just got. And everybody has to listen to me. And my wife gets pissed because she hates hearing about that stuff. And, <laughs> and there's this, and, and somebody says, oh, you could go, you two could go set up a room together, you know, and and it's like, yeah, but in alt space VR, I just walk over to you and lean, you know, and talk to you. And if we're over a little ways away, no one else can hear us. It's it's so natural. That part of it's natural. The the one big downside of it is, I have no idea who people are. Sometimes I don't have their real faces. Yep. <laughs> you know, Matt, Matt Summers and and Scott Lemke look like themselves. They have got great avatars. You can tell immediately who they are. But you know. It's uh, I haven't seen Zach for a while, and I don't think his beard looks like that. <laughs> maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. And maybe it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, and none of you can probably see that Marty's blue. Yeah. Well, this is my <laughs> streaming avatar. 
Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I actually have two Altspace accounts, and one of them is basically just for watching the VR meeting. And so, and it's the one that I use on the PC where I'm not interacting usually. And so that's what what I'm using right now um, to do this presentation. And, and that's maybe something you you should maybe stress is that you can do it in 2D. You don't have to do it in VR. Right. So that, I sh yeah, I do want to stress that. So, I mean, all you folks watching right now, you could be joining us in Altspace. Um, and the instructions are in that URL that I, I posted. Um, you do have to fast forward a couple slides, but then um, there's only like four slides in that thing. And one of them is instructions for how to find us. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? I, I think that the... Um, yeah, oh, I, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, just that we are talking about having like a Thanksgiving, you know, Zoom call with my family. And it's the same deal where like, you know, Zoom is just going to be one conversation, everybody talking over each other. And I wish I could get my family to come into Alt Space, right? I mean, I think that would be far um, superior experience. But of course, you know, it's full of people that are my dad's age, and I don't think they're going to all get into Alt Space. Um, do we want to go somewhere and just uh, kind of show what that's like? I wanted to show off a little bit of the um, the interface. So, I mean, the interface on Altspace is a little bit strange. You've got this menu down here, um, and, like, this is how you mute yourself, but you can also, like, click this to, to do things like to... This is, like, saying I'm happy, I guess, and this one's clapping. So, like, this is a common... We, this is probably the only one we use for the VR meeting. Why don't you guys clap so I can see what that what happens? Oh, Zach's Harding, um, but it's it's just emoting. You're emoting. Uh, so it's clapping. Um, look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Yeah, exactly. It's kind of just bringing bringing <laughs> attention to yourself. But you can also do um, so. Th this brings up the main menu, and there are these tabs: discover, events, world, people, me, settings. Um, it, me is where you like you know change your avatar. So here's the the blue avatar that we've been talking about. So this is the the VR meeting like recorder. I wanted it to be like a robot. They used to have robot avatars, but they don't anymore. Um, do you think they'll bring back the robot avatars? They really should. Anyway, doesn't sound like it. It seems weird that they don't have more avatar options actually. So that's one advantage that. Um, uh, VR chat has over alt space is that there's a lot more control over your avatar and like people have really decked out like customized avatars um, in a way that you just can't have in alt space right now um, and I think that ultimately that's much cooler um, but VR chat doesn't have it's like lower fidelity it's 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 worse in other ways anyway um, people is where you can like search for people and find I don't know why I have this search here. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, I have a request from somebody. Let's. So they were following my instructions, but I didn't get notified for some reason. Um, so uh, now I want either wanna... somebody in the group or some, some random stranger. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, it could could have been either one. So <laughs> now I can invite them to be here. But now I'm like, now should I do that? I don't know. <laughs> so they can come join me. <laughs> <laughs> now that you you put the fear in me, like maybe it's some stranger. Uh, anyway, so there's the so there's events in Alt Space, and like I don't know, have you ever done an event that wasn't one of our events, either of you? Well, we yeah. just talked to somebody who went to the uh, uh, Burning Man thing, said it was pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah, actually that was one that I went to Microsoft. Oh right, yeah, Zach talked all about the Microsoft event, um, which was like a VR developer meeting thing like a conference really right like it was how many days yep two days two days um yeah About two thousand people at the peak seems pretty good i mean that's a normal conference yeah. or a good good number for a normal conference um uh so i mean the but they they exist all the time like you can just like browse like oh what's happening today um I've never done that, uh, but it's, I mean, it's a thing you could do with it. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I really just want to emphasize the social aspect for our meetings in particular, and um, I don't know. That's that's really all. Uh, do we want, I wanted to show off, like, going somewhere, too, so let's do that.
can, can we yeah. go? Can we go to our usual uh, place? So we do the uh, meetings. The at? three of us, we can go to our um, yeah to our private space because we're on the list, but nobody can follow if they haven't been to a meeting. Yeah. So it, here's and Dan. I'll, I'll do a portal. Are you are you one of our um, Twitch viewers, Dan? You're my new friend. You're scaring him, Marty. I well, <laughs> I think he's talking, but he's muted. <laughs> You're muted, Dan. <laughs> little red microphone. In, um, the little red microphone at the top of your menu, Dan. Oh, yeah. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes! Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are you... Are you um, here from the IGDA, Dan? It's been pushed several times. Are you here from the IGDA? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Am I still muted? Nope. Dude, you're real soft. We can hear you now. Okay. I'll turn up the volume. Oh, there we are. So, Marty, you want to go somewhere and we'll take Dan with us? Volume at three. Yes. Oh, it's interesting. I, I think you have the stream open too, Dan, because we're hearing an echo. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'll shut off the stream then. <laughs> you can just well, or you can mute it. That's that's good proof. Yep. You just mute. You can just mute your computer okay. for the stream. Stream is muted. So if I open world, so I'm just going to choose a random world. Actually, let's go to this one. Don't, so I don't do it. Don't do it. So don't do, do it. it. Don't do it. Why not? Load times. Load, Load times. times. Okay, okay. So what oh, should I do? Yeah. You probably have Brooklyn cached. We can't go to the private world right now. We lose Dan. Yeah. But should we go to Brooklyn? Okay. Can I, can I do the portal? Do it. All right. So you create these, second. like, so when you're going to somewhere, like, so if I had clicked that enter button, um, it would give me the option of creating a portal. I can't remember actually how that works. What kind of gear are you using, Dan? <laughs> I have anyway, laptop. one of the things you can do is create this portal, and then everyone can follow. And we'll see that in a second. Zach's going to create one. Are you making a Here portal, Zach? I am. There okay, it is. Okay, so point at that big blue thing and click, So in Dan. the future, this is what real life is going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We're just going to be Scott, able to instantly click, teleport. Scott, click. Stay clicked. Here we go. <laughs> Brooklyn rooftop hangout. So the um, this is what the loading screen looks like. So Zach thinks that I had it cached. Probably I had it cached. Um, I actually have a home environment as well that is, I think, like a copy of this. Like this is just one of the default environments. Oh wait. Uh, maybe this isn't. That's not true. You probably are muted, muted again. Yep, I'm muted again. Uh, now I'm not again, or not muted again. Here, fo follow me. I'm, I'm, follow me. Oh, okay. Dan's loading. Oh, you heard that audio drop off. So you can hold shift to move a little faster. Um, you can also uh, teleport, and I don't know how to do it in desktop mode. Right click. Yeah, I can't remember either. Right click. Press F to teleport. Press F. Yeah, yeah, F gives you the teleport line. Yeah, so I can teleport Scott, around. Here. Can you grab this uh, rainbow staff, Scott? Like, oh, there it goes. There's like stuff you can grab. See, this is new. So here, this is the new thing you can grab. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, that's like a rainbow stick. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, there that was goes. cool. That was cool again. Um, yeah, I mean, so there's like just like little things you can play around with. There's basketballs in a lot of these environments. <laughs> just bounce it off my head. Well, I, I'm trying to be a demo. <laughs> um, I am currently, as part of my, uh, you know, day job, uh, creating a social VR thing. 
it's not it's not meant for you know massively multiplayer like this is it's it's definitely like meant for a small group um but man it's so much more work to add multiplayer to any project and then vr is just like it's just okay i talk about making games sometimes i talk about how 3d is not just uh one times harder th- or two times harder than 2D like it's a it's another dimension it's so much harder it's exponentially harder and i feel like adding vr is the n- is the same like leap forward and adding multiplayer is like maybe 10x like it's just multiplayer is so hard and it's not even so i'm using a framework called uh um normal core which is uh the company that made Half Half. It's just a great, fun little VR multiplayer game, <laughs> and uh, and it's and it's great. It's really good. It's about as simple as you could possibly make networking, and it's still just so much harder than it should be. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I th- I think it's it's one of the harder things in game development is multiplayer, and I think online multiplayer specifically. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know. That's that's about all I wanted to do. Is just kind of here's an intro to Alt Space, and I was kind of hoping for more people. Dan, you are awesome for showing up. You're you're the only Good one job, really. Man. Although Happy Scott, help. <laughs> Scott didn't know, so it was it was new to Scott too, I guess. Or it was, uh, but he he's a VR veteran, so. <laughs> I'm gonna t- talk about the private space just for a little bit. Sure. Since we've had so many encounters already tonight um so it is the nature of these places that you just run into random people and they're very very interesting <laughs> and um, generous, I think. and then depending on what kind of console or game releases happen that week um you might have some bored uh teenagers and tweens that are just there to harass people and uh that happened at the microsoft conference it was really funny but that's because I wasn't organizing it. If it was my event, I would have felt bad. And um, you can you get very harassing. You can get you know up in people's faces and make loud noises, and then run around in a zigzag pattern, so it's hard to click on you. And uh, and, and, and I've had people flirt with me. The room. <laughs> you know? But um, alt, alt space will let you make private spaces, and they'll host them for free. And that's what we did. Uh, the only downside to that is there's just a strict list you got to add people to. So um, once that's set, you know, for a normal group, um, it just stays set forever, and people can that you trust you can get in there and create new worlds or modify worlds and that kind of thing. For our events, it's a little trickier because um, we need to add people to the to that list to get them in the space. So our first couple of meetings, we had struggles and then that list is built up over time it's like 80 people or something now so pretty much everybody that's uh, ever been to a meeting is already on the list and they can just show up at any time and, and now that we've had a couple of meetings bad you people can being friends with people you and you can find those people and get to where they are easier and stuff which is nice yeah and the that's that's true. Can can you um, always get to that space if you've been invited before? Yeah. Is it always open? So if I yep. look, go to your my events. My events. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. and that's because you finally created one, right? There it is. Yep. Yeah. But Dan can't go there, right? Correct. Right, because he is Dan. not on the list, presumably. <laughs> Have you ever been to a VR meeting, yep. Dan? No. No. <laughs> Just curious. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that um, I, I actually had, like, a little bit of an ambition to look into how to create alt space worlds for this talk um, just because I thought it would be fun. But um, have you guys, have either of you looked into that at all? We've messed around with, uh, with a, a map um, altering one, adding stuff mm-hmm. to it and stuff like that so the yeah the what i found out today just this afternoon was that they there are actually some in alt space controls to to do editing which like i don't yep. think that existed previous i mean i don't know when that came in but i definitely remember I months don't know, ago 
Yeah, m looking at it months ago and not having that stuff, I think you had to bring it in from. No. Nope. No, nope. it's always it had that there stuff. It's, oh. it's always been there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm wrong. You have to be Maybe in a space right. that you have you have admin privileges, so that's not probably been the case a lot of times. Okay. If you created your own space, you'd be able to modify it right away. In fact, you can, if I'm not mistaken, if when you sign up for like like Dan just did, you get a space. That's your yeah. Space. Everyone has a home space. And I and and do you do you have host privileges on your own space, Zach? Do you remember? Yes, you do. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can modify that one, but you do have all the privileges. You can create an event at any time right from the menu. And I've tried that too. Yeah, it's, you can just go and make a whole new space. Yep, not your default bunch of, space. Bunch of templates. Does this and lots of objects that you can populate it with? Does this space that we're in now have like honking horn sounds? Is that part of this yep. yes. environment? Yep. <laughs> Because yep. I keep yeah. wondering, like, I remember who is last it? Time we were Who's here? audio? Who is, like, in a place <laughs> right now with honking horns? <laughs> we're in Brooklyn. Oh, I, I remember the, okay. the first time we were in that place we were in before, I was thinking the crickets were outside my, you know, June, <laughs> you know, open window. Oh, hey, here's another uh, VR, VR aficionado. Um, okay, yeah. so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up this. Months. Unless you had anything else you wanted to say, Zach, about nope. how the VR meeting uses it. Um, I'm gonna wrap up so. this portion of the evening. Thanks for joining me in Alt Space. And I don't know if we want to try and it wasn't super successful. So I was I was gonna think if a lot of people showed up, like maybe we'd we'd convene after um, back in Alt Space, but. Um, I, that didn't really happen. I don't know. Maybe next, can, maybe could, next month or something. We could s schedule a social event. That's what I was thinking for December. And... Yeah, for December, let's have yeah, a holiday. Yeah. Let's have a holiday party in Alt Space. Um, and we'll practice. Uh, we'll practice with the Met on the third. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna close Alt Space now. All right. So back to, nope, not that one, this one, <laughs> presentations. Now I'm going to uh, try and get um, a hold of our main speaker this evening. Give me just a minute. All right, let's start a call. Ellen. Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> All right. Give me just a second here. Um, oh, it's got the wrong window. It's so annoying. That's that's not the thing. Yep. It's like, come on. I have. <laughs> um, that was really. I really liked our little field trip into alt space. Oh, so good. I'm so glad. For showing us around. Um, and I, those, <laughs> those horns do sound like Brooklyn. That was well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, I've, I've been to Brooklyn, but I don't remember what it sounds like. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hand it over. You are our main presenter and I'm excited for your talk. So, um, welcome Ellen. Yay. Hey. Uh, so I'm Ellen. Um, I'm on camera now, but I'm going to be showing, uh, I think, some slides mostly because, uh, you know, more concepts that I can really explain than I can do with my hands. So in a moment, I'm going to start that stream. Um, but I know many of you, I think, who are on the Twitch channel and chatting away. Uh, where is the giant clock? It is right here. <laughs> I will not be using it tonight. <laughs> um, but it is, it is, rest assured, it is right there at all the time. It helps me remember to stand up and sit down at regular intervals. Um, <clears throat> so I uh, just a heads up, I will be using the chat a little bit tonight. I'll be asking you all for some input um, in ideas and brainstorming and things like that. And we'll see how that goes. Um, 
And if it goes well, then we'll keep doing it. If it's a total disaster the first time, then we'll improvise and we'll go from there. So that's that's the plan. All right, I'm gonna start my stream or my share now. Do, 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 do. It always goes better if you sing a little bit while you're starting it. All right. Is it working? Oh no. Okay. Cool. I'm hearing typing sounds. That sounds good. It's working. Great. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about tonight is um is learning experience design kind of through games. Um, so just to, to give you a little bit of background, uh my my area of expertise and my the vast majority of my experience is in uh, learning design. So <laughs> the day job, as Martin said earlier, uh, is learning experience design. And that's what I do um, for most of the hours of the day. I've got about 10 years experience doing that. I was a teacher in public school for a while. Um, and for the last three plus years, I would say that I've been kind of games adjacent through Glitch and um, working with Nice Games Club and worked with Stephen McGregor and Mark LaCroix on Widget Satchel. Um, so I've been peripheral, uh, but the, the thing that I think is really cool about being a learning experience designer is that there's a lot of crossover. And so that's kind of where I'm trying to bring those two worlds together um, more and more. And I'm not the only one. It's kind of a, it's a, the industry is kind of blowing up right now. Uh, and we'll talk a, lot, a little bit about that more later. Um, so I would say I'm not a games expert, um, but I do believe that games can teach. And moreover, I think games are a better model for learning than what we've all probably experienced in traditional classrooms. The thing is, it's really hard. It's a hard chasm. It's a hard gap to, to bridge, really. It's a chasm. It's huge. And I think part of that is because of what Martin was saying earlier about like every time you add more dimensionality to something, you're adding more complexity and the complexity compounds upon itself and makes it even harder. Um, well, adding learning goals to a game experience is one of those compounding factors. It's another dimension. So that's a uh, makes it really difficult. And I think that's one of the reasons why lots of learning games are maybe not games we would choose to play if we have alternatives. Um, and it's something that we can keep working on and iterating on. And I think that uh, game developers like this community um, have a lot to offer. So I'm hoping that we can talk a little bit about some tips that would make starting the design process for a learning game a little easier for everybody um, and hopefully unleash some of your collective wisdom and expertise onto the learning world. We need you all. Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that some people have worked on some learning games. We will be tapping you for stories and expertise as best as you're able to provide them. Um, so today we're going to go through a couple things. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's a learning game and what is it, you know, how does it compare to the term serious games and how does gam gamification fit into all of this? Um, I want to do a really brief overview of kind of the state of the game-based learning industry as it's coming to call itself and what that looks like and where you can find, uh, you know, examples of, of that kind of work. Um, and then we'll get into the tips. So we're going to talk a little bit about like, what does it mean to describe the actions that we want people to take? as part of a learning experience or as the result, um, how you kind of take that and make it into a game um, instead of something that just feels like a quiz with extra points added. And then last piece of advice about keeping it short, which I really hope I will continue to follow in my own professional work. Sometimes I'll be a dog. That's gonna happen too. So if you can hear a dog, that's just, that's gonna be there. One second. Dante. We're just gonna we're gonna talk over him because he's gonna do his own thing. Okay, uh, so learning game. Um, I want to kind of come at this question from a different angle. So I'm gonna lean on you all to use your fingers and type, you know, type into the Twitch chat. I want to know, just like, give us a deluge of ideas. What are some things you learned from games? Um, which games did you learn them from? 
And that can be anything like it can be academic. It can be, you know, I learned to type from the game. Um, it could be non-academic. It could be facts, but it could also be other things like emotional skills. So <laughs> someone asked to show dog. I will try to show dog later in, <laughs> in the event. Um, <laughs> uh, Lane, you know that I have real dogs. Learn as a pet. Seriously, I feel like we have to, we have to bring the dog on and nothing's going to happen. Um, tell you what, you guys all chat and put some of the ideas for what you've learned from games in the chat. And then if that happens, I will bring a dog on screen. Every time we have good audience participation, I'll show you a dog. How about that? <laughs> um, so while you are, yeah, there we go. Troubleshooting and trial and error. Thank you, Carl. Um, probability, great. Uh, I think one of one of my personal examples that um, that I like to bring up here is uh, resilience or like persistence. Um, there's this one game that I absolutely fell in love with. It's called Thoth. I don't know if anyone's played it. It's like a twin stick shooter where you're a shape. I love games where you're a shape, I guess. Um, and it was really hard. It was really hard for me. And it has a really gentle like way of getting you back into the gameplay after you fail, but it was still incredibly difficult to make progress. And I just beat my head against the wall until I no longer felt frustrated when I was failing. Um, and that was, a, I think, a, a learning experience for me. And I've carried that learning experience forward into other games, but also into other environments. Um, so I have found myself being a little more patient because of some pixels that I played with. So what are some other things? Um, we've got learned patience with a game called Weighted Satchel. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, persistence from Mega, Man's and other, Mega Man and the other two hard NES games. Um, plenty of facts about the trip. Yeah, Oregon Trail. That's like one of the classic titles that comes up in these conversations. Strategy, logarithms, um, Realm Grinder, great. How to save up money instead of spending it all right away. And I'm really curious if that came from a game or came from the, like, the, meta learning around saving up for games. Um, Dark Souls is, yeah, patience and control and timing. Um, <laughs> resource management, okay. I did not learn how to play music from the Miracle Piano Plants. Learning to adapt and improvise. These are, I think these are really great. So I think we're seeing um, we're seeing some, some patterns here. Some people are talking about facts. Some people are talking about skills. Some people are talking about like really broad ways of thinking, like strategic thinking, um, uh, pattern, like patterns of behavior, like learning to save, uh, and so on and so forth. So you guys have earned a dog. I'll see if I can text my husband to ask him to bring in the dog. Give me a second. Hey, Eric, the followers, the viewers have earned a dog. Can you bring a dog in? Oh, he's watching the stream. Hey, Eric, can you bring in the dog? Okay. Dog, dog incoming. Um, okay. So that was great. Thanks everybody. Um, I think that's, that's exactly what I was hoping for. It was like a really broad, um, a really broad kind of range of responses and different things that we've learned from, from games. Now I want to kind of have a follow-up question and I know we'll have at least one person answer in the affirmative. Um, okay, dog, one second. Before you answer this question, brief dog. Dog, hey buddy, you have, the, you have the mystery machine. Come here, come say hi. Okay, bye, goodbye. <laughs> There you go. I don't know if that's the first IGDATC dog appearance we've ever had, but um, we'll hopefully get get more of Dante later on this evening. <laughs> uh, okay, so follow-up question. Has anyone tried to make a game specifically for learning purposes? And the same things that we just, you know, the th same broad categories apply. So it could be a game that you tried to make to get someone to learn something academic, or um, it could be something that you wanted people to learn, you know, like a skill like financial responsibility or how to deal with a savings account. Or maybe it was about how to invest your money in a 401k or what does it mean to have a mutual fund? Or maybe it means like a game around how does it, how does the presidency work? Lots of, lots of options. So we're going to see some, 
<laughs> some of the responses on Twitch chat. Um, yeah, first edgy game taught math by playing tic-tac-toe with math problems in it. Yeah. Yes, with Microsoft Teals. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Gameplay to communicate with my six-year-old. Fable 2 taught me to be a real estate mogul. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, some of these, you know, we were talking a little bit ago about like how you learn things from games, even though if they weren't necessarily intended to be uh, learning experiences. But one game that for me was like that was Sim Ant, um, which I think maybe was made with that that goal either t like maybe tangentially in mind. Um, but I never looked at ants the same way. I was I would just I would be so excited about seeing the ants and I would wonder what they were doing and were they putting their eggs over here and did they find enough green food balls for the day? You know, it it change it can change your perspective on on the world. Okay. So it's good to know um, that some of you have been doing some game-based learning development. Um, so I think to tie this all together, what I'd like to kind of push us towards is the conclusion that, you know, all games are learning games. So even if you haven't made a game specifically for the purpose of learning or for a learning outcome, you're going to still have learning in your game. At the very least, players have to learn the game. So there's always going to be learning in the game because the players have to learn the system in order to interact with it. They have to learn the inputs in order to participate. So there's always going to be that aspect of learning in your game. But there might be other um, peripheral learning that happens as well. OK, so all games include learning. All games include learning beyond the tutorial and gameplay. And I think the reason that happens is because uh, learning is not just a cognitive thing. I think that's a lot of where our focus maybe as a society is on. It's like you have to learn these facts. You have to learn these cognitive um, skills around studying. But learning is also physical. You have to engage your body. Your body, you know, learning happens physically in your brain. There's a chemical process that happens in order for you to learn something. Um, it's emotional. You are you pay attention to things that emotionally engage you, and you cannot learn if you're not paying attention to something. So, if you are emotionally engaged in something, you're more likely to learn from it. And games pull all of those different aspects of the self in as well. Um, the thing is, I think um, often when we think of games as learning or learning games, when we hear that term, we're thinking of something that's a little more specific, like genres of games for kids or, you know, gamification or math blasters. Um, so when we say, you know, when we say learning games, I think there's an association with like a formal educational purpose. But that, you know, as we're just saying, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, it's not necessarily the case. Now, <clears throat> to kind of, get us more over into the educational games space. Uh, one thing that keeps coming up when I talk about this with, uh, with folks is like how sometimes educational games can feel out of balance. And the, the phrase that keeps coming up is like, they're light on the game side or they're light on the learning side. And it's hard to get a good balance of those two elements. And if anyone disagrees, I you know definitely talk in the chat. And if you have more to say on that, um, add your message in there and we'll, we'll try to get around to it. But you know, for a lot, I think a lot of um, people who have tried to learn through a game, learn something through a game that was intended for learning purposes, it comes, you know, it comes across as like more fun than a lecture, but maybe not as fun as like a real game. Um, and I think that's something that is a really difficult problem to solve. That's that chasm I was talking about earlier. That's the thing that we want to bridge, and it's really difficult to, to bridge. And I think. It's a problem you have to solve anew every time you're making a game that's focused on something different. Um, so that's what we're gonna kind of dig into a little bit today and see what we can do with it. Okay, I think one of the things then that makes it difficult for us to bridge that gap, and, I, and one of the things we should think about first, you know, when we're trying to jump it, is how like our paradigm and our experiences around learning um, teach us and condition us to think about learning as like a specific thing. I think we're conditioned to think about learning that as something that looks and feels like a classroom or as something that's formal. I think that's changing 
because there are so many different learning, um, you know, formal learning platforms available online. And obviously with the pandemic, everyone's kind of had to just switch the way that they're doing it. And it, you know, might be breaking down some of our um, preconceived notions about what it is. But ultimately most of us learned in a classroom. There was a teacher who ran the classroom and a, many, many, many more students than there were, were teachers, right? There's one teacher and there's like a couple dozen students. And that's the par that's the dominant paradigm for learning. Um, so our paradigm for what learning is kind of, like, it, it's built around those expectations, the feelings, like the organization, the patterns of a classroom. Um, that's kind of what shapes our expectations, both explicit and implicit. We might not even be aware of them. So I think when we're trying to come up with, you know, a different kind of learning experience, like something that's a game, it's really tough and we have to do a paradigm shift. So I, th I think one way that I like to describe it is a translation. So we have to kind of, ooh, there was a hiccup there. Oh, we have to translate um, what we need for the learning side into something that can be um, expressed in game mechanics. And if we can successfully translate that, then I think the game mechanics side and actually building the, the, the dynamics and the pillars of a game that feels authentic and feels balanced is a little bit easier. So what we'll do today is we'll kind of try to go through a process. Um, I, I am really curious to hear though, if any of you have um, experienced kind of this, this idea of games being used for school or work. We talked about a little bit about, you know, the things that you've learned from games. I asked you if anyone has uh, tried to build an educational game, but now I want to know um, about your experience as learners instead of necessarily you know, players. Has anyone tried to learn something or been given a game saying, okay, here's your game that you're going to play for work and you're going to learn this from it. Or you're at school, you're going through a classroom and you're going to play this game and you're going to learn something from it. If you've done that, if you've had that experience, I want to know a little bit more about what it was like. Like, was it was it good? Is this idea of imbalance something that you've had direct experience with? Um, and if not, like, tell us about the game that you think really nailed it. So I will, <laughs> yeah, I will look at the chat and see what you guys come up with. Um, we have one person, one viewer who says, I am in school and I've played so many. I am curious to hear more. If you can give some examples, um, Silent Sky. That would be, that would be great. I mean, um, I was in school a while ago. Games, obviously, Oregon Trail was one of them. I think I mentioned a typing game earlier. That was that was another one. Um, and there are a lot more now. So do 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 do. They are okay. Yeah. <laughs> Exasperated ellipsis. Yeah, yeah. I think I read the same thing into that ellipsis um, lane is just like it there's a whole separate conversation around like can can a game really be what we expect of as a game if you're forced to take it um that might have to be a different talk I feel like that's a little bit more philosophical than we want to get tonight but um yeah yeah I think a lot of those games from like circa 2000 that are running on flash or you know, for a little bit longer at least. Uh, and that when I think about those, that's that's where that idea about imbalance comes in for me. It's they're they're not, you know, they're they're obviously made for a purpose and they're not necessarily authentically or inherently engaging. Uh, so as abstract puzzle says one of my favorites doesn't count as something I learned, because I already knew them. But this game teaches it. Nice. Yeah. And Elaine, I think that's a really good point too. Like we're gonna, I'm going to bring up some screenshots of examples of digital games, but that the principles hold, you know, hold true for physical games as well. And I think that that can sometimes even be more effective, just depending on what you're trying to teach. You know, if, if you are trying to teach um, something with social interaction and you don't want to build multiplayer into your digital game, um, maybe you don't have to. And yeah, there's a lot going on for science. Um, and there's a lot, I think, that, that takes existing games and then puts a framework around them so that they can be used for education. Minecraft is one, um, Portal is another. Um, we won't necessarily get into those too much today, but yeah, 
I'm not surprised to hear that a lot of you have, have had experiences where you've been given a game as part of a formal education or training experience. Oh, this is really cool. So Abstract Puzzle said something that is really pertinent because this is one of the things that I want to workshop with you all this after or this evening. Um, so Abstract Puzzle said, I have a friend who made a card game for his work. He's the head of a large company's computer security. So every new hire plays this card game to learn about the security practices. I really like that. That's kind of cool. An alien game for leadership development, but it didn't feel like learning from play. Yeah, that's that gap. That's really hard to bridge. Okay, <clears throat> so there are gonna be a couple of different terms I think that I get that might get tossed around. I wanna just quickly define these for you all before we um, before we kind of get into more examples. Feel free to keep using the chat though, because I like the examples that you guys are sharing. Um, so just for you, just for, for the, this evening, I'm gonna define some terms so that we can all be on the same page together. Uh, I like the term game-based learning. Um, because to me, that term focuses on the learning, but also like it, it says that the game is the learn, is the tool or the experience by which the learning happens. There's also this term serious games that I think is becoming maybe a little bit more dominant in the industry uh, parlance. I don't like that because I don't, I don't know, like I've learned really serious things from games that would not be called serious. Um, so I don't, I don't really, I don't like the term serious as part of that because I think it's just, it's just limiting. I'm probably being too pedantic, but that's me. Um, educational games, I think those, those are kind of used the same way. Um, I like game-based learning because I think, again, education to me speaks to like the formal education or framework and the classroom within the experience we're used to there. And I think we need to break free from that. Um, and then gamification, which is supposed to have a second quotation marker on it, and doesn't, but that's okay. And for gamification, like to me, the difference between game-based learning and gamification is gamification takes game mechanics and puts them on something else that has nothing to do with the game mechanics. Game-based learning is at its best when the game mechanics are completely aligned with the thing you need somebody to learn or do. And so you know, that's why like your mindfulness app might have points and stuff for it. But, you know, the mindfulness is not a points based system. Um, that to me is an in, you know, in indication of gamification. Um, there's not like a strong inherent relationship between the mechanics and the outcome. The mechanics are just a means to encouraging engagement. And that's not to say that gamification can't be effective. It can, depending on what you're using it for. Just trying to clarify some terms. Cool. Yeah, yep. That's exactly why. Exactly why um, I don't like the term serious games. As uh, that's what abstract puzzle was saying there. It implies other games aren't serious. There are lots of serious games that don't fit into the serious games genre or industry, and there are lots of really silly games that like looks that don't look serious that are really really serious in theme. So I just yeah I don't know falls flat for me. So I've said the game-based learning industry a couple times as a phrase this evening. I do want to just kind of touch on this. I don't know if this is something everyone's aware of, um, but there is like a, a, I guess the people who do an, the the main analysis report in this space don't describe the game-based learning industry or serious games industry as a subcomponent of the video games industry or games industry overall. They look at it as a subset of learning technology. Either way, this is kind of what comes back. So it's kind of in a boom phase right now and educational games, game-based learning, serious games, everything that falls under that umbrella is growing really, really fast. Uh, there's a lot of interest in it. There's a lot of investment. Um, so that's kind of why I think it's pertinent to talk about now, not just because everyone's you know, having to change the way that they learn, but there are, I think, enough people and enough experienced practitioners and the technology is accessible enough that people can, can really explore how to do this and how to use games to help people learn um, more broadly than has ever, ever been possible in the past. So that's that. Um, what are some examples? Well, you probably know some games that were designed for learning that are made for consumers. 
Um, there are way more than I can possibly fit on a series of slides. So I just put a couple examples on each one. Um, Coding Planets is one of my favorite mobile games. I wish they had more planets out, but you, you learn like you learn coding principles by moving a little bot around the screen. I think there are quite a few games like that that teach coding that way. Um, <clears throat> Twelve a dozen is uh, an award-winning like math game that is. They, they think they're trying to really hit that balance between something that's, is play. It's a playful experience. It is a game, um, but through the gameplay and through interacting with mechanics, you are developing your knowledge um, and abilities around the specific topic. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was just agreeing with something in chat. There's a lot of good stuff in chat. I hope you guys are reading it. It's really good. I'm proud of you all. There are also, you know, tons and tons of games made for pre-K um, and then K through 12. So iCivics is a huge one. Um, I made a joke about the presidency earlier, but that's actually a game that I think is pretty good at teaching at least the process around it, if not necessarily like how to do it well. Uh, that's iCivics Executive Command. They have a whole curriculum and a whole spread of different games available to teach kids civics. Um, maybe fun for adults too. And you know, Minecraft is just so much buzz around my, Minecraft being used in schools um, with the education edition and they have lesson plans and things like that. So. We don't have to go too far into this because I think we've all played some of these, or many of us have at least, but tons of games around that in that space. Um, there are also games made for and by higher education institutions, sometimes for research purposes, um, like Fold It uh, was a game, but it was a game with a research goal. Um, there are, you know, there are VR simulations where you're, you're working through medical problems, like this is one from the military first aid. Um, there's one, I have not played this, but it is freely available. It's about misinformation on, uh, on the internet and how you can fight it, but it kind of flips it around and puts you in like the role of a chief misinformation officer. It's called Breaking Harmony Square. So I think after we get off the, off the Twitch stream tonight, I'm gonna go play that and see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> businesses. So Walmart, um, they have a game that they use for training. It's called Spark City. That's a screenshot on top. Um, and there, there are co corporations and nonprofits that are using games to try to train their employees, like the card game that came up in chat. Um, it has a really good example of the kind of, uh, learning goal that might have an organization seek out a game developer to make something for that. Um, the one at the bottom is one that I was involved in where we were teaching childcare providers like how to how to watch five babies at once. You know, like what are the things you have to do? What's the pace that you have to react to? And what kind of trouble are these babies going to get into? Um, also, you, please keep them safe because they are children and they, you know, are people and they belong to someone else. So those, you know, if, if a company, if a business or organization has a specific like training goal that they need people to be able to achieve, games are one way that that's being done. Um, and then healthcare, uh, there's one, I think this is Saving Lives is a game like there's a C, it's like a CPR simulator. Uh, I think it's made by Filament, they're out of Wisconsin. Um, and then this is just a screenshot of a patient who's using um, a VR application that was designed for a different purpose, but for rehabilitation. So lots of healthcare applications as well. Basically, there's a ton of stuff. Um, where do you start? <laughs> so there's all these different things you can do with games if you're going to apply them to a learning goal. But if you have this goal, how do you start? And be like, what's your first step? What do you do? Um, and I think if you don't do this first step well, then you're gonna you're gonna quickly go down on the wrong path, and it can be difficult to correct without feeling like you're throwing everything out. Um, and I think then if you can do this well, it's gonna make the rest of your process easier, or at least it's gonna give you a clear a clear path for where you need to experiment and iterate next. And this first step um, is called trans. I'm calling it translating the do. So um, the do is not your hair. The do is the action, the thing that you need learners to be able to do. So your learners, your players, whoever your end users are, 
you need to figure out what they need to do, what observable action you want them to be able to do with the thing they are learning. And this is where I think that paradigm shift that I was talking about, is about learning as knowing. Um, you know, what do people need to know? What are the standards we're going to teach you? What are we going to test people on? Like we're used to thinking of learning as something about knowing. But when you're trying to create something interactive, that's that's an action, that's a verb, that's a do. And so if you really want your interactive experience to be tied to what you need people to learn, you have to be able to make that learning visible and tactile and something you can see affected in the world. And that's one of the trickiest things I think to do is that paradigm shift. But if you can do that successfully, it really narrows down your focus from, I need to teach a game about addition to I need to teach a game about adding double digit numbers to single digit numbers. And I know how to do that because I'm gonna do this. So, you know, we talk, I think whenever you're talking about design, the topic of constraints comes up and how constraints can be helpful. This is a way of giving yourself some constraints so that you don't have to take like a huge topic area and make a game that might have something to do with something in there. You make it specific so that you can translate that learning goal into mechanics that makes sense. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> you start with what people need to know, you try to translate that into what people need to do with it, and then that becomes it that becomes easier to then convert into game mechanics. Let's maybe see what that looks like a little bit. Um, we're gonna work an example, and we're gonna try to take a knowledge-oriented like quiz question and turn it into a game idea. And at some point, I will ask for your help. We'll see how we do. Okay, so first example here that I'm gonna start out is just like a quiz. This is just like your knowledge oriented quiz question you're gonna get. And it's funny because it has to do with information security. <laughs> so that was pretty fun that that came up earlier. Um, I'm sure that everyone has taken quizzes like this. It doesn't have to do, you know, whether you've taken it for an IT security e-learning course or you've taken a different quiz. Everyone's taken these multiple choice quiz questions before, right? It's just, what do you know about this? Can you answer this question? Um, and it's not very, I don't know, depending on how well the answers are written, then it can be fun, I guess. Um, here's, you know, basically, basically, to ask you the question, what's the following, you know, which of the following is the strongest password? So it's just asking you to identify something. Um, and that's how I would describe the do of this question. Like, it's just asking you to identify a strong password. What we really want people to do is we want people to make a strong password. It's a little bit different. <laughs> the answers always see. <laughs> we'll see. I wonder if people disagree with that here. Um, it is definitely not A. So right, this quiz question, the action, the do, is identify the strongest password. But again, the, the thing that we actually need people to, to do is create a strong password, is to make one, is to type one in. So let's see what happens if we translate things back and forth a little bit. Um, first, keeping that in mind, do you want to show a little game? So someone, um, someone took that goal and then made a game around it. And the game is... Um, this is just a game called Password Blaster. So I'm going to open it up. Okay, I'm going to click start. The sound might be loud, so I don't know if that's going to come through on the stream, the stream or not, but I'll try to mute it. Well, let's... Yeah, okay, it's loud. All right, so this is the game Password Blaster. Uh, keeping in mind our previous quiz question, the do was identify a strong password. Um, I'm going to play this game and then we'll come back and ask ourselves what the do was, like what was the action that we were actually, you know, actually being asked to engage with. So here is our, here are our rules and our context. Um, we're going to shoot passwords. Here is what a good password needs to have. Um, no birth dates and stuff. All right, go. We've got some numbers. We've got some hackers, I guess. Um, 50 passwords are going to come across the screen. So let's see. User 9 on net, that's too many nines. I'm going to shoot that. Okay, I have 95 points. This, to me, looks like a bad password because I would never remember that. Oh, okay, but it is considered strong. However, I would never remember that. So that's not correct. Okay, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. 
All right, apparently these are strong passwords. That one's not. That's also strong. Again, I would never remember that. Project manager. Okay. So, hmm, drows, drows at SAP. I would imagine drows would use SAP. Sure, why not? Um, so you guys are getting the idea. We've got, oh, we've got passwords, we've got points. Ultimately, the thing that we're still doing though is we are identifying, um, we're identifying passwords again. <laughs> I don't know about the hacker game index. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the stream again. I'm also wondering, like, okay, I don't think, yeah, okay, I don't think they're asking me to say spoon, no, but I did. So there you go. Draw this password spelled backwards. Yeah, it totally is. That's hilarious. I just thought about draw because you know. Elves. Um, yeah. I know, right? Is that's a really good question. Um, it so what uh Owen Rat was just asking is how old is this? Even WoW tells you when you have a bad password. Sometimes training isn't the answer, you just need a technical solution and your problem is solved. Like, why rely on users who are always gonna have a mistake? Um, if uh if you can just solve this technically. Um anyway, I'm gonna exit this. So the point, though, I didn't want to necessarily bring this up because um, how do I get back to where I was? Boop, 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 boop. There. Um, the reason I brought that one up is because it had the same um, it had the same like goal behavior as the first one. So the first one, this this quiz question. Identify the strong passwords. This one, same thing. Identify the strong passwords. The mechanics around shooting and clicking have nothing to do with entering a password. Um, <laughs> my husband just, just said, hey, that game is teaching you to use terrible passwords. I know, it drives me crazy. But the point wasn't that it was a good game or that the content was accurate or even that you'd want to have that game as part of your training program because why? You wouldn't. You'd just have your application require certain characteristics and the passwords. The point that I wanted to bring home is the do in this, in this game was the exact same thing as the do in this game. It's identify a password. So that word identify, it's the same. And to me, that means the game mechanics in this password blaster game around clicking and shooting they're not a, they're not aligned with the thing we need people to do cool okay so how do you you know what does it look like when you actually do align the mechanics with the do with the with the performance with the behavior that you need from people uh this is an example it's not a sexy example it's pretty ugly but it's an example of something that aligns mechanics and um and the the desired outcome of the learning. So what are we what have we done so far? We want people to know how to make a good password. We want them to actually make a good password. Um, here in this example that I kind of just sketched up, um, it's text entry. So the requirements around what a good password is are built into the program and you just say, okay, type in three strong passwords. And when you got it, you got it, you're good. Again, I don't know why you'd make this part of your training program, but the point being is here, if we want people to make a strong password, the mechanic is text entry and they have to make a strong password. So we will align the mechanics of the system of the game with what we want people to do. And if you want to, you can look up the rules. Um, so that's that's how, what this looks like if we're actually aligning behavior and the mechanics of the game. Um, that doesn't really seem fun though. So this isn't the sexiest example I know, um, but conceptually, this is what we want to get towards. You want to get towards the alignment. If you want to make a game out of it, though, this is not going to get there. So this isn't really fun. It doesn't have an interesting context. It doesn't have an interesting challenge. Um, and so it wouldn't necessarily be something that people want to play. Um, it's just it's just mechanics. It's not necessarily a game. So what do you add on to that uh, context and challenge is what comes next. So the question I guess I would have for everybody, and this is going to be a little weird, I think, to do on Twitch. Because there's a little bit of a delay, and this is kind of brainstorming. I get a little bit hard to do this kind of abstract thing in this way. Um, but I'm curious if anyone, you know, if you want to 
bend your brains around this for a moment and see if you can think of something, a game context, a game challenge, a setting, a story that takes these mechanics that we've laid out. There's some text entry, there's some password rules, the things that we want people to do. What kind of context and challenge and story might we add to this to have an idea for something that someone would want to play? If only for 10 minutes or five minutes, how do we make that into something interesting? So if you have ideas, um, go ahead and toss that in there in the chat. Uh, I have some ideas that I'll share in a little bit, but I don't necessarily want to do that now because I don't want to spoil it for you. I want your ideas. Um, yeah, have someone try to guess a password. I like that. Maybe add multiplayer to it, like competitive password making. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly where my mind was going is like matchups or something like that. Like what if you had a password and then someone sitting across from you had to try to hack it? Um, Password Sudoku. Oh, that's really good. Social engineering simulator, where you play the role of someone actually trying to gain access. That would be really, really cool. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's already done that. Um, but you could do a really fun story around that too. Like it wouldn't have to, it wouldn't have to be something so dry. It would actually like you would really, I think, immerse people in there with a good story and good characters and stuff like that. Um, maybe something where they have to build strong passwords to protect a puppy. Yeah, I would play anything with a puppy in it, so I'm sold on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, each password is a wall. Walk around looking for stuff um, written on a sticky note. Yep, exactly. So like maybe you're, I don't know, you're Jason Bourne or whatever, and you're sneaking around someone's place and trying to hack in. Um, yeah, exactly. So you guys are going to go with some really interesting, um, <laughs> put a puppy in there also. I'm not sure where. Uh, right. So I'm seeing both elements that we need to, to add to our game idea and to actually start working in a direction that could be fun to play. One of them is context. So the contextual elements we have kind of in the answers you guys are giving are competition. You have two head to head. Um, kind of a simulator where you're playing the role of someone to gain access. Like that means that you're gaining access to, to a business, like a fictional business or a fictional office or um, maybe a journalist, you know, a journalist's laptop or something like that. There's some kind of story. And one element of that story is the context, the place where this, this um, hacking is taking place. Uh, I'm also seeing... Um, <laughs> Can you pet the dog in the password creation simulator? Uh, yes. Um, there's also challenge, right? So the challenge elements I'm seeing and what you guys have suggested are, you know, protect the puppy, get into the system, gain access, beat the other person if you're doing something competitive. Um, you know, signify what characteristics each password has, uh, maybe try to figure out exactly what the, what characteristics are where, almost like imagining maybe almost like a, it would be like a weird um, battleship game. I'm not sure if that really works, but it'd be interesting. Um, so we're getting kind of both elements here. The context, something that kind of like makes the learner think about the type of situations where this would come up in real life and a challenge that's actually fun to, to work with and fun to play with. Those are the things that you need. But all the things that you guys suggested, um, those are all aligned with that initial mechanic that we talked about, right? Like entering a password, creating a password, not just identifying it, but taking it that one extra step and making sure that the, the core mechanic of your game is aligned with the thing that you need people to do in real life. And if you can get that magic connection there, that's the, that's the base of your bridge. And you can bridge that chasm from something that's just play to something that's also learning or something that's just learning and is also play. I think that if you don't have that, that piece, then your bridge won't hold up. But if you do, you're off to a good start. Okay, so um, I think I owe you guys at least one other dog. I'll just leave this up on, on screen for a while. I wanna know if you guys have any questions. Um, and uh, Martin, I think since you have voice access, if you have any questions, you can just say them. 
And you are brilliant, I agree. Bits of entropy calculator and play around with different combinations to see how cryptographically safe the password is. That sounds really cool. Okay, I don't, I wasn't even making that up. I actually really want to do that. I don't know why. It sounds fun. It's a password simulation making game and I think it, I want to play it. So make it or something so we can play it. Okay. So I will have one more request for my husband to bring in another dog and uh, then we will call it a night. Um, like, like Martin said, I think earlier on, uh, I am one of the hosts on the Nice Games Club podcast and our 200th episode comes up tomorrow. It's a special episode and Mark did a whole lot of work editing it. Uh, and there's some cool announcements on the episode as well. So uh, check that out. Um, you can find me on Twitter and you can tweet at me. I might see it. I might not. Um, I'm on Discord and the MSP Game Dev Slack. Uh, and I'm here. If you ever see the word, you know, the name Nose Poke pop up, that is me. Which dog will it be this? Oh, it's Pixel. It's the other dog, different dog. Pixel. 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 You're not. Hi. That's Pixel. Oop, nope. That's Pixel. There we go. Second dog. She's very proud. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great job. Ah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I don't have any questions for you. I'm, I'm bad, at, <laughs> bad at coming up with questions on the fly. Um, I think that that's great. okay. Um, I don't, I don't think you connected this, so I'm just going to say it out loud that uh, I'm abstract puzzle in the chat. <laughs> oh, no, I totally didn't connect the dots there. <laughs> it's amusing oh, that's okay. you say, like, <laughs> yeah, anyway. I could have just used your name. That's right. I don't think, um, I don't think Patrick was in the chat tonight, um, but Patrick Sweeney is another, like, I've worked on a few education games with him um, for various clients. And, hey, Martin. Yeah. Chat folks are saying you are super quiet. No. Oh. That's mate. That might be because my microphone was up, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> wah, wah. Anyway, you're. St oh, you know what? I have to do this button. Okay, there you go. Now we can see you again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I think we're just gonna wrap up because that's it, right? Like, uh, um, we could. I don't know. In the past, I've always been like, okay, we can go to Discord and like hang out and play games, or we could tonight we could we could go to Alt Space and we could play in Alt Space. Um, but actually, I'm gonna probably not do either of those things. Um, but we will definitely organize a social event for next month. Um, and, uh, I hope to see you all there. Um, you too, Ellen. <laughs> Thanks again. All right, everyone have a good night.